Hello, welcome to What's Bubbling in Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at the GPU parameter of Zim Frame to run on the GPU for ultimate speed, as well as a new method of the ticker, and that is called RAW, which uh, makes it as fast as it possibly can. So let's go to the Zim site now and see an example. So zimjs.com, and we'll press on examples. And here is the GPU power. Ooh, my. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, so let's see how, how we did this. First of all, the code for calculating all of that, the velocities of those particles and stuff, was done by Fumio Nonaka. And uh, I, I mean, it may have come from somebody before him, but uh, this, this project um, was copied from his code uh, into CreateJS, and the CreateJS folks did a, did a version of it and posted that on their code pen. <clears throat> and I looked at it and said, oh, cool, let's see if we can bring that in Zim and make sure that it works there too. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the particle equations are coming through that pipeline right there. Here's the particle equations. We're not really going to go through the particle equations. Uh, you can view that at your leisure. But the second part down here was uh, then copied from the CreateJS structures to, to make this work, aside from that label. And we've massaged it or put it into Zim code, so use some Zim uh, efficiencies there and it's it's gone from the create jazz code was 3,000 characters so 3,000 characters to be able to do this and the zim code is 1,500 characters to do this so that's basically half the amount now I then added a few more things about um, colors uh, but other than that that's that's pretty neat that we were able to make some efficiencies there um, in and most of it was efficiencies due to zim some of it was efficiencies just in uh, uh, rewriting rewriting the code a little okay so getting back to it then uh, we are in zim 6.6.2 uh, where we've added that new ticker feature called RAW. We've had the stage GL stuff or the, the GPU uh, stuff for a little while now. And uh, we may have done some bubbling on that earlier on as well. Uh, but the, the ticker uh, dot RAW is new. And just in case you're, you're needing to know about that right away, let's just go down and find that. Ooh, sorry, that's probably making you dizzy. Ticker.raw, that's what we're looking for. There it is. Ticker.raw, and then we're running that function. Now, what that really is doing is it's just passing directly through to the request animation, request animation frame. Excuse me. And the rest, request animation frame is the new way in HTML5 to uh, update when the when the the browser is ready to update so you know it kind of locks right in and syncs that uh, the CreateJS ticker has a setting for that and so does the Zim ticker and the Zim ticker is using piggybacks on the CreateJS ticker and so it's all fine it can be locked in there the difference is though the Zim ticker holds holds track of what other functions are added to the Zim ticker through a a custom dictionary. Zim has provides a dictionary. A dictionary is a way to look up um, something based on an object, not on a string. Well, a string is an object, but in a in an object literal, for instance, a squiggly brackets, you can look things up by a string. A dictionary is a way to look things up by something else, for instance, a function object or any object. So the Zim ticker does that so that we can add multiple functions to it and it just keeps track of those multiple functions by using the function itself as a key to be able to look up <laughs> that, you know, that we're using it. And that's normally not a problem at all, but when we're dealing with um, maximum processing here and running 25,000 particles, that kind of thing, uh, Chrome had a little bit of a, a problem with it. So a slight slowdown in Chrome Firefox, I didn't notice the new Firefox. Um, 
So I had to look into it and say, well, why is this happening? And then when I compared it to directly to a request animation frame, a raw request animation frame, that was a difference. So it was just that, that lookup uh, happening in there that was slightly slowing it down. Now, I'm not worried about it all uh, when we're using ticker.add here. <laughs> not ass. <laughs> ticker.add. When we use ticker.add, that's when it's doing the lookup. And, and why that is, is if we add multiple functions, we want to run only one stage.update after those multiple functions are run. We also want to be able to remove those functions from it. I'm managing, or we're managing in Zim, we're managing uh, all of Zim Animate, Zim Move, other things like particle emitters. There's a variety of things that uh, might be tying into that um, Zim ticker through the add. And so we need that for organization. But if we're just running some dynamic art like this um, and need maximum power, then we can use raw. So that's really what this update is about, the raw. Uh, and there we go. There, there's your, your bubbling. But I would like to go through this code and talk about a few other things as we go as well, because there's you know, a fair bit going on in here. Okay, so sit back, enjoy. Let's uh, start from the top, shall we? So we're up at the top here, and uh, like I said, that was introduced in Zim 6.6.2, but you can see that we're not using that script. Instead, we're using a distilled version of it, which was 37k. So that's how much of the Zim stuff we need to be able to run this example. And I would recommend if you're doing a final product that you do that, that you distill Zim. So let's let's go through the process uh, one more time here. We've done this before, but I think it's good to see again and encourage you to use distill. Here it is without distill. And if we save that and view it in a browser, hmm, there she be and works just as it did before. Now what we're doing is we're going to turn distill true. What that does is says start recording what functions we're using. We go down to the bottom after we've made all this stuff and we can probably just call distill directly like that. Let's just do it. I, I put it in a, a timer or a t sorry a timeout just just in case something else needed to run that was in a timeout, you know, a little bit or something. Sometimes there's a delay in things. But anyway, once the frame's ready, I don't think I've got any other timeouts in here that might delay. You You just want to make sure you run distill after you've run all of your code. Okay. If there were a timeout in here for some reason, we might be running distill too soon. But I think we're good. Normally, with a, an app that has interactivity, buttons and stuff like that, you would run distill after you pressed all your buttons, <laughs> you know, so that you know all the pages have, have run or um, loaded, you know, all the images are shown, whatever things you might be using, you run distill after that. So we save that here and we refresh, like so. Uh, we might run into a little bit of a problem. F, oh, not F11, F12 to bring up the console. Yeah, here's a problem. We made 2,000 of those things, and in the 2,000 loop, it's it's not able to output that many uh, that much data. So let's just reduce the 2,000 to 20, like so, and save this again. Refresh. Uh, there we go. And don't worry about that warning. That's a CreateJS thing. Uh, something to do with CreateJS saying draw arrays are, are slow. I don't know. They don't seem to be slow and uh, it would need to be fixed on the CreateJS side if there's any fixing to do. They've decided there isn't. But this information right here is the distilled, the distilled information. So we can take this and copy it. Let's copy that and paste it right into this URL right here. Uh, we put a company. Hey, I am Inventor Dan Zen. We say what the app is, raw. We paste in the data there and hit distill. Now what this will do is it will create minified code. There it is. We just copy that. That's the minified code of all of the stuff that distill used. Like so. Here's the non-minified code of, of that so that you can refer to what's in there. And this minified code is... 37k. All right, 
So we then use that minified code for distill. So here is what that looked like. There it is, 37.2K. So I'm not sure what was different. Oh, maybe the number of party, anyway, whatever. Uh, so there's the minified code that we were calling in. And, and that's how distill works. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> and now we want to uncomment that when we go back to using the distilled code. So uh, we don't need to distill anymore because we've already distilled. We ask for the distil distilled code instead and we comment out the, the main doc. So basically, certainly within five minutes, probably within two minutes, we can convert a full uh, Zim library into a distilled version of that and use that instead. Great. All right. So moving along here, we have a new frame that we've made and there's something a little different than normal. Uh, if we don't say what kind of scaling we're using, which we don't there, then it will default to full scaling. So we're using the full window here. We're passing in a background color, GPU of true. So that turns on the stage GL, which is CreateJS's way of doing WebGL, I think, right? Uh, very, very fast. And uh, what that means is everything we put on the stage, though, needs to be either uh, cached uh, or uh, bitmap. Okay, so things like shapes and stuff, we need to cache those to put them on our fonts. We need to cache them to put them on. It's a bit of a pain sometimes to use, but if you need absolute speed, you're welcome to it. Most of the, the Zim features that I've been making um, haven't really needed the GPU. So, but a dynamic art piece like this uh, definitely does. Let's try, for instance, if we remove the GPU stuff. So I'll just take that out, like so. We'll save that, and how, what was our number? So if, if we view this now, open in browser, we didn't have all that many, so this is uh, approaching the cursor just fine. We Okay, even without the GPU. And let's uh, move down and increase our number. By the way, did you see that with the number of particles? That, you know, that looked nice. So we might want to use this without having so many, many, many. Let's just see if our 2000 runs into any problems. So this is now 2000, and really, I, that's pretty good. I don't notice too much of a difference. See what I mean? So, I mean, this is 2000 particles, and performance seems fine. Uh, 25,000 particles. Uh, refresh here. Oops, <laughs> missed the refresh. Uh, refresh. 25,000 particles. Bog. So, there we are. I mean, it's not completely bogged, but... Okay. So now we'll bring back, with some control Zs, we'll bring back the GPU here. And let's try that again. Bumped up to 25,000. So we save that and recall our, our bog and refresh here. And there's the, um, the the GPU in operation. So it seems almost like invincible. Okay, neat. Um, carrying on then, the GPU, we've added a GPU object. Now this information here came from the CreateJS version where they were saying, yeah, we need to, on that GPU, we should preserve our buffer. We should turn anti-alias and true. Sure enough, you can see it looks a little bit uh, square if you... Um, don't do that one. And the preserve buffer might have something to do with the fact that we're, I'm not quite sure what that means. You'd have to look it up on the CreateJS site, but um, might have something to do with the fact that we're not clearing the stage. So let's just come down to that now. This is normal frame stuff. We're not clearing the stage. We said auto clear false. Uh, if we don't do that, what happens is we wouldn't get any of those trails. We would just see the um, the balls bouncing around with with no trails. <laughs> okay, so uh, no, and we've done a trick. So underneath the equations here, we've, we've just turned the auto clear back to false. What that means is 
when we update the stage, it updates it over top of what's there, so it adds it to it. So I'm going to scroll down here to the part where it says fade. And we will um, comment. Mm, yeah, we'll comment the fading out. So, oops, not with a period, slash, we'll comment the fader out. We'll get to what that fader does in just a second. And here's the opposite. So this is a constant fade. Or sorry, not a constant fade, but uh, no clearing at all. And so you can see that it uh, makes this almost like a, a painting effect, which you may want, but I didn't want. Okay, and there's a sort of psychedelic noise effect of not clearing the stage at all. So instead, what we've done is we've added a rectangle that is black over top of the stage width and stage height, and we've set the alpha to a very small amount. Let's just set that alpha to 2, or 0.2, sorry. There's an alpha of 0.2, and what's going to happen is each time it updates a stage, it draws this rectangle over top of what was already drawn. And since it's got an alpha of 0.2, it keeps on fading it out. And so um, the past updates are, are being faded out. Now the past updates, mm, that's not working. Something happened. Save that and refresh here. Oh, maybe it is. It doesn't look like much as the alpha is going. Was there something else that we needed to change there? What did I do? What did I do? Auto clear false. Keep the backing true. Well, maybe that's what it looks like at point two. So, uh, yeah, I suppose it does. Yeah, that's it. Um, hardly any trails. Yeah, so we're back to. I see little trails there. You see them? But you can definitely see the balls bouncing around more as, as balls and only a small trail on there. Right, yeah. So that's fine. Uh, here's a point one. So now they'll it'll fade uh, a bit longer. Oh, I know what the difference is. I we've still got twenty five thousand pieces on here, which doesn't look great when the ball is that big. So um, where's our number? Do, 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 right here. Yeah. So let's just reduce that to two thousand. This was just a you know a visual. Uh, we, a visual thing. I didn't want that many balls bouncing around. There we go. Okay, so that's a bit better. Can you see those fade lines going in there now? Yeah, and let's just do a quick uh, adjust back again to a point 0.2 or point 0.21, probably wouldn't tell. Refresh that here. Yeah, we get those balls with a small little tail. So small tail. And now we'll go back to what we had it at, which was a point Oh, point zero 0.01 was it? I think it was. And we save that, and this will give us a longer tail. Oh, no, it wasn't point zero 0.01. That's too long a tail. Okay, long tail. Point uh, zero 0.05. <laughs> Crap, can't remember. Uh, you wouldn't think that'd be all that much of a difference. Yeah, I think that's what I had it. I like seeing the swooping tails. And when we've got a reduced number, we can kind of see them better. So to see those tails in there? Alrighty, good. Play with that all day. I have been playing with it all day. All right, so that's what we're doing there to handle the fade. Yay. Now, what should we take a look at? How about the making of the particles themselves? We've got a bunch of colors. Now, there's an important thing in here. Uh, very important thing in here, and that is we are passing in a cache canvas to the particles. So note that we've made the cache canvas here. Now, uh, the, the CreateJS version had one of these things, so it basically looked like uh, it was white, like that. It was a one pixel thing, so minus. 0.5, I guess. So since it's a circle half on one side, one is its, let's see if it's one pixel in radius. Oh, uh, I guess I'll change it to 0.5. All right, and 2,000, and it was 25,000, so 25,000 like that. And let's see what that looks like. This should look roughly like the uh, CreateJS example, which is also pretty neat. You can see those swirls. It's like murmuring. 
So very impressive. I just didn't want to uh, copy it exactly, I suppose. So I've uh, adapted it to Zim Colors for just a bit of a different effect on it. But that's a very neat effect too, isn't it? All right, now watch what happens when we don't use a single cache canvas. So the neat thing about this is we've made, basically we've got one color now. You wouldn't need all this, it would, it would boil down to, you wouldn't have any of the loops or the bits or the colors. Uh, okay, I'll continue. You'd have var bit, one circle, cache canvas. We wouldn't push it to a, we wouldn't push it to a, an array. We wouldn't have to shuffle this. We would just say bit dot cache canvas like so. Okay, so we've made one circle, we've cached it, and we've used the cache canvas over and over again, 25,000 times. So we save this, let's just confirm, refresh, okay, what did we forget? Particles.push, bit.cache canvas, there's the bit.cache, uh, var bits, var colors, oh, color, uh, frame.white, like so. Save that. And a refresh here. Woo! Okay, and we're back to how we were before. So we've made one thing, we cache it, and we're using the cache canvas. When we use the cache canvas, that is known to the GPU and will not get loaded over and over again. What we would tend to want to do here or expect to do is copy that right down into the loop like so. Now this is how you would normally come in and think think how to do this. Okay, I'm going to make a bit and I'm going to cache the bit and then I'll put that bits cache canvas in there. And watch what happens. I don't think we can even do it with, I think it'll bog at, we'll put it at 10,000 now. So this is 10,000. We might be able to make 10,000. Here we are waiting, waiting. And there we go. Here it comes. What the problem is, is this is 10,000 calls to the GPU. Big difference, isn't it? 10,000 calls to the GPU. The other way, when because the bit is different in each case. So in each case, we've made a different bit with a different cache, with a different canvas, and asked for that bit's cache canvas to go in there. And then the GPU is trying to handle uh, 10,000 of these um, calls as it goes. So that is a big no-no. That just does not work. Uh, an, a way, another way around that. So what we had to make sure is that we only had one bit up here, like so, and we used that one bit's cached canvas. And now we're back to operational. So this is one call to the GPU. Big difference. Uh, another thing that does that is, is called sprite sheet. So a sprite, if we use a sprite which calls a sprite sheet, the sprite sheet is done once, called once to the GPU and that's it. And then from then on it's able to move that around and, and it's really fast. So if you're working with images, don't clone the image. Don't have a bunch of bitmaps. Even though bitmaps sound like they should be cached and put into the, the GPU, it's a, there's a whole bunch of calls to the GPU. So you can use the bitmaps cache canvas, or if it's a, um, a sprite sheet, then it all, it's already doing that. So, uh, or it's, it's taken care of. Yay. Okay, so that's a, sort of a big deal there, isn't it? Let's just undo through that though, and go back to the way that we had it with the colors and so forth. Bloop, blah, 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 almost there. I think that's it. So what we've done is we have made five different, or four different, sorry, four different cache canvases stored in bits. So bits is an array here, and we're looping through that array, and each time we get the color from that array, that's a zim loop, mix, uh, instead of a four var i equals blah, 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 blah. It's um, just a nice easy loop. And we're making a circle for each one, uh, that has a different color, and then we're pushing the cache canvas of that into bits. Then we're shuffling, so we, we're making two thousands of these, or two thousand of these, and we're shuffling bits each time. Now bits is only like four long, so the shuffle's pretty quick. If we were shuffling the 
2000 array, then uh, we'd probably just access random elements of that array rather than shuffle it each time. Uh, anyway, and getting the first one each time we shuffle it, we're putting it randomly on the stage, stage width and stage height. All of this particle was made by the Fumio fellow. Fumio fellow. <laughs> uh, thank you. And here's the particle. Now, in their example, they had used a container for this, but you don't need to make a container hold the bitmap, and then they just added the bitmap to the container. That would be, you know, uh, 25,000 containers when you don't really need that, I don't think. Um, maybe it didn't make a difference if they... No, I think it probably would, should have, could have made a difference. So uh, I've adjusted that a little bit, and also we've moved it into the Zim extend here. The Zim extend automatically calls the super constructor uh, by default unless you pass in another parameter in here, we've extended a bitmap. So we directly extended a bitmap. And uh, in other words, this super call here is calling to, uh, we're extending a Zim bitmap. It uh, is passing the image into a bitmap and basically turning particle into a bitmap rather than a container, which makes more sense. Uh, and then all these properties are being added as well as the prototype methods are being added to that bitmap instead. Okay, so that's making the particle. We're putting them into a couple of arrays that are used by those equations up above, and that is the make section. We saw the fade section already for movement. We're tracking the mouse position, so this is sort of the ultimate in efficiency in tracking the mouse. Only track the mouse when we are uh, stage mouse move. So on stage mouse move, we're recording the mouse point. We're taking our our mouse point and putting it in a variable, or actually putting in this this um, point right here. And then later in our update animation, which is being run by the tickers raw, so that's that request animation frame, you know, perfectly in sync there. Uh, nothing getting in the way. That's the raw power. Uh, we're running that and we uh, can make use of the mouse points X and Y. I probably would have not bothered doing that two-step thing. I would have just asked for stage.mouse X, stage.mouse Y. Do you want to see if we get any difference? So forget about the stage mouse move. Forget about the point thing here and just say stage.mouse X. You don't really need to be efficient in this, I don't think. Stage dot mouse y. So that would eliminate some more code as well. And let's just see if that updates. I don't think I removed it or did anything elsewhere. Yeah, you know, it's, we're, we're, we're not going to see any performance issue. Really, the thing is, if I then hold the cursor still like that, uh, I'm calculating the stage mouse x, stage mouse y in my in my cycle when I don't really have to because I'm not moving it. So it is ultimate that we're, you know, that we did it the other way. I may have done that if I really wanted to be serious about it all, but uh, <laughs> maybe not. Okay, and then uh, we've got a resize event. We're looping through all of the particles that they want and uh, doing an update on it, which sort of moves the particles into probably the new stage W and stage H. So every time we do a resize, we ask for frames uh, width and height, and then we can move the particles into the right place there. There's the frame dot on resize. So these are uh, some of these things are, you know, unique to Zim. Not unique per se, but I mean, sorry, we're modified to be Zim. This is a, a frame dot on resize. Uh, the frame has a resize event. Um, in the CreateJS example, I think they drop back to a window dot resize kind of thing. But it's nice to sort of keep it in into the same. Or no, it wasn't a window dot on resize. That's the thing. It was like a window dot add event listener resize. And so you have to, you're sort of going back and forth between two systems is a bit of a pain sometimes. Um, great. Oh, and clearing the stage each time we move so that uh, the bad trails don't stay in place, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure why. Uh, 
that's fine. And then we're popping on a label. Now this label needs to be cached. Watch. So if I don't cache the label and we refresh here, I don't see the label because this is the GPU. So um, that's the kind of stuff you have to deal with. You also have to deal with things like this. Uh, if we, the easy way is not to skew the rectangle, but the easy way is to skew the whole uh, label. I think that works. So let's just try that. We save it and refresh here. Oh, um, now I don't have to do italic. So if I don't do italic and I don't skew the rectangle, but I skew the whole label, because the label is a container, then I refresh this and there it is. That's it nice and skewed. But look at that beautiful font. It's like, okay, GPU, what did you do? GPU, what are you doing with this skew? You know, I don't know, there, there may be some way around fixing it. But you see what I mean there? That's just yet another thing to have to say, okay, well, now that I'm using the GPU, something's going wrong there. So it can be sometimes a little bit of a pain. In the past, uh, I've not been able to mask using the GPU. I think we can mask, though, using the GPU here. But it was things like that back in Flash when we got uh, stage G, or their, their stage, I can't remember what it was called now. <laughs> action, stage, action, stage, something. <laughs> stage GPU. Uh, anyway, when we got that uh, system, we found that we couldn't cache or something like that, or not cache, we couldn't uh, mask. All right, so let's just undo that though, but the solution to that was to see, it seems to work if we just skew the rectangle and then make the font italic, and then we're back to something that looks good in the GPU right there. Uh, good enough anyway for um, font on that. Well, I think we've been at this for a little bit of time now, wouldn't you say? Uh, but that pretty well wraps it up, I think. Um, in summary, a couple things we did here. We distilled. Now we're using 6.6.2, but a distilled version of it. We're running with the GPU true uh, in the frame. When you do that, you have to make sure that you cache things. We set the stage to auto clear false, and that means it sort of stamps it on there. It keeps on drawing over itself. And the cool way around that is to add this uh, fade right here, which um, causes the pass to fade out because we keep on writing a very faint rectangle over it each time we are writing that over top of it. We made a bunch of particles. Remember the cache canvas. So make Make it only once. If you got one thing, have only one cache canvas, and then in your multiple loopings, you um, can uh, make bitmaps out of that cache canvas. That's fine. Uh, but that, because the, the cache canvas is known and it works out all right. So, yay! That's been What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. Have a great day or night. Ciao.